friends and welcome to stamp and chat live i am gina from gina k designs and it's great to see all of you coming in from all over the united states and all around the world tonight we're going to have some fun we're going to be playing with layering stamps now i know layering stamps can be a challenge for people um, because it's not always easy to see exactly where they go even when they're clear stamps and sometimes if you could just Put the layers together first before you stamp, you'd be able to nail it every time. So tonight I'm going to do a little replay of my template method of, of creating layered stamps. Now this method I did, I don't know, I guess it was probably maybe last, maybe last Christmas. I did it with our layered poinsettia set. And that one's a little bit easier to see. Uh, this one... I think it's easy to see, but some people find it a little bit difficult. But after you see me do it with this template method, you're going to nail it every time. So let's, uh, before we get started, let's say a big hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Greetings, crafters. <laughs> How are you? I'm better than horrible tonight on this <laughs> Tuesday night. Tuesday night, yeah. So we started our new schedule and... Um, we're now on Tuesday nights and Thursdays at noon central time for our craft or noon. This schedule worked a little bit better for us. We hope it works for you. But if not, remember, for Stampin' Chat Live, there's always a replay. Now, last week, Tom and I um, only were on on Tuesday night. And I did post two five-minute card videos last week. So if you didn't get a chance to watch them, take a look because they're super fast and a lot of fun. All right. Well, Tom, I got some gifts. You did. That's well, actually, yeah. And and I do. I mean, you guys are so generous. I get gifts from a lot of you and I really appreciate all of them. And I thank you so much for your kindness and your your thoughtfulness thinking of me. I know, Tom, you get gifts. You get lots of cowboy hats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've, got, I've got quite a quite a setup, here. quite a collection. I can see them in the background. But um, I wanted to share these two little gifts with you because they're actually something that crafters can use. And I think you'll both you'll really like both of these. These are great ideas. So let me show you what I got here. First of all, from my friend Mary, Mary sent me this. Look at this. I'm going to move this out of the way. So this is a clamp, some sort of clamp scissors. When I first saw it, I got nervous. It felt like the dentist. But you see down here. Now, I don't know like where where she got this, but I bet on Amazon, if you <laughs> search clamp scissors, you'd probably find it. It's got a little clamp down here and it just pulls apart like that, right? They're not scissors. It's just a clamp. It looks like something from the medical field. But what's really cool about it is you can put it with your cardstock and then clip it closed like that. And it makes a great way to hold your cardstock for when you're embossing. Now, I don't recommend holding it down here because metal is a heat conductor, but if you're holding it way down here, that's not going to be a problem at all. And um, it takes up a lot less space than the clothespin. So if you're doing a very intricate background, you can hold it in the tiniest little empty spot. So I thought that that was really cool. Medical clamps, is that what they are, Debbie? Okay, thank you. So that was a really cool little gift. So thank you, Mary. I appreciate that very much. I will use that. And then my friend Lorraine sent me this. So this is a little magnetic uh, dish. And she felt bad for me because she knows that I lost a couple leaves. So she throws her dies in here. Check that out. I mean, they stick right in there. So this way, when you're working with your dies, you can throw them in there. Any little metal parts that you have for anything, your hot foil plates, whatever you're using, you can stick them in there. And it's a great little storage place. And they're less apt to just 
fall off your desk and into your trash can. So Lorraine, thank you so much for that. And I'll be using that as well. I wanted to just do a shout out there and say thank you. All right, everybody. So what I want to do is let me show you the stamp set that we're going to use tonight. Where did I put it? Here it is. This is the layered carnation stamp set. Now, some people have said it looks more like a rose. It does kind of look like a rose, but I thought it looked kind of fluffy like a carnation. So I did my best. Um, but you can use it for whatever you want. And I think it works well for either. So these three layers for the flowers, these three layers for the leaves, and then these three layers for the little berry sprig, it's kind of just like a little sprig. Um, some people are having trouble lining them up. So I thought I would revisit our um, template method for this. And so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now I did a little bit of pre-cutting here and I wanna show you what I pre-cut so that you guys know. Let me get a lighter piece of cardstock here so that everything is easier to see. Okay, so what I did here is I took some vint, some, um, what color is this? Not violet, it's um, plum punch. And I just cut using the dies, here's the dies, I just cut three of the flower heads on little squares of cardstock that measure two and a quarter by two and a quarter. One of these is for each layer, okay? And then I cut three of the leaves the same way. And this was, hmm, this was two and a quarter by two and a quarter. This was two by two and a quarter. And that is for that die right there. And then I also did the same for this one. And I'm not exactly sure how big this is. This, these were just scraps. I think they were like one and a half inch by maybe hmm, one and three quarter inch, but it doesn't really matter. Just something a little bit smaller. And then I cut it, cut these out using this die. Okay, so this is what you want to do for your template. You want to have these, you can reuse these over and over again. You cut them once and you reuse them. All right, so that's the first thing that I cut out. Then I cut out a few pieces of vellum. I cut two that were about the same size as these, two that were a little bit smaller, and then two that were smaller yet. These are just pieces of vellum. So these now the vellum pieces you'll have to make each time you do this template technique. So I recommend if you're gonna set up your Misty to do this or whatever stamp platform you're using, if you're gonna set it up to do this, then you definitely should be in the mood for mass production. This is your opportunity to make lots of your own handmade ephemera that you can use on cards later. You can do all different colors. It's very easy once you get the template set up. Okay, then the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is cut a bunch of blank pieces. So I cut lots of white pieces for the little sprig. I cut lots of leaves and I cut lots of flowers, just plain blank flowers. And so that's what you have to cut. If you have your phone and you wanna take a picture of this so that you remember what you have to cut, but it's very early into the video, so you should be able to find it again quickly to see what I did. Okay, so this is the prep work that you have to do for this technique. Now, I'm gonna push, push this aside and I'm going to get my Misty. Now for this, you can hold the Misty in any direction you want, but I think I'm gonna do my main flowers in this direction. And then I'm gonna try to do my leaves up the side. We'll see, if I can't fit everything all at once, we'll figure it out, I should be able to. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our template. Now you should have some washi tape or some purple tape or some pixie tape or some kind of tape close by that you can tape your templates down once you get them set up, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna cut a few pieces here so I could just grab them once I get things in position and I don't have to worry. Welcome, welcome everyone. We are making a template for mass production here. Okay, so there's some pieces of washi tape. 
Now I'm going to create my template on a bigger piece of white cardstock. Now you could even go bigger than this if you want. I think I can fit everything on here, but maybe I should go just a little bigger. Let's do it right. We're going to do it. Let's do it right. So what I'll do is I'll get my big paper cutter and I'm going to cut this eight and a half inches by six inches. There we go. You can always use white cardstock for scraps, right? So a little piece off the end isn't going to hurt anything. But then we've got a pretty big piece of cardstock in there. So this is eight and a half inches by six inches. And then I'm going to tape this piece down right here. And I'm going to tape this other piece right here, just kind of to the side there. I do not want this to shift once I have it in place. Should I back up? You think I'm too close, Tom? I mean, it doesn't look too close on my screen, but you know, if you're watching on a 52 inch television, that is a big misty. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our flowers. We can set up everything actually. So I like kind of keeping the flowers in the same direction that they're in on the stamp sheet because they actually layer exactly the way you see them pretty much. Maybe this stem is a little off, but that's okay. All right. So the way the layers work, this is your light color and then this is your medium color and this is your darkest color. So the smallest detail is the darkest. So I'm going to put these kind of going in the same direction right down here like that. Okay, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna put my leaves. I think I'm just gonna do leaves and, and um, flowers. I don't think I'm going to do the little berry thing, even though it's going to be, if you're going to do it, it's done exactly the same way, but I think it'll just be easier for everybody to see if I just stick to two different images. Okay. And you can do this with any of the layering stamp sets that you have in your collection. Okay. So there we go. I've got my three stamps set up on the top here in order light, medium, dark, light, medium, dark. I can spread these out a little bit now. I think they like it zoomed in. Oh, you like it zoomed in? Okay. All right. I'll zoom in a bit more. I don't want to go too much. There we go. Okay. So now I've got all my stamps laid out here and I'm going to close the lid of the Misty and pick them all up. Okay. And then I'm going to make sure that my cardstock is in place and I'm just gonna press down on these stamps so they're not gonna move. Okay, alrighty. So now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp the biggest flower in a color that's gonna be vibrant enough that we can see it. So for this, I'm going to use wild lilac. And you can use ink cubes for this. Maybe I should just because it's easier to see. Let me do that. Okay, so I'm going to use wild lilac for this really big one. Okay, let's just ink that up. And I'm going to stamp that. And then I am going to use my Chucky tool just to put a little pressure on it. Okay, there we go. Now you could stamp it more than once if you want it more vibrant. But remember, this is just the template. This is not your project here. Okay, so I'm going to clean that stamp off. Then for my next stamp, I'm going to stamp this one, warm cocoa. This seems to be a good combination. Actually, I think maybe I'll do something different. Maybe I'll do like tranquil teal. Do I have tranquil teal over here? I do. I'm going to use tranquil teal. I really want to be able to see it. So I'm doing this second one. This is the medium color here. Okay. There we go. All right. I'm going to clean that. And then I'm going to stamp this one in my darkest color. 
So I'll make that um, charcoal brown. That's a pretty dark color. Okay. Now this is not the color that my flowers are going to be. This is the color my template is going to be so that I can see really well. That stamp set is the kit set, right? It's the kit set. Yes. Okay. So there we have our three designs. And let's go ahead and set up our leaves the same way. So we're going to do this leaf in wild lilac. I know this seems really weird, but if you watch this on replay and you stop and start and you do each step with me, you're going to be really glad you did it. Okay, so there's the first one. And again, I'm not worried about how solid it is. I'm not worried about the colors that I'm using. I just want to be able to see them. So I want them to be very bright. My second color is going to be the tranquil teal again. Okay. Clean that. I know a lot of you are like, what the heck are you doing? But if you, if you didn't see my last template video, this is all going to make sense once you see it. And this last one, again, charcoal brown. Just want to get the twig in there. Okay. So be careful when you um, clean these stamps that you don't move them. You want the stamps to always stay where they are over here on the misty. All right. Now, now what we're going to do is we are going to take... Remember those um, pieces of vellum that I made? We're going to take a piece of vellum and we're going to place it over that image, okay? And we're going to stamp it again in wild lilac. Now, wild lilac on vellum, it's not going to dry very well, but I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. So we're going to stamp this right on there. And we're going to gently peel that off, okay? All right. I'm going to put that aside for a minute, and I'm going to clean my stamp. Now here's where we start creating the template. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our first die-cut template I'm using the word template a lot, but die cut template. Here we go. There we go. You got to just shimmy it around until it looks right. Now you can see that is perfectly spaced, right? <laughs> Donna, don't be confused. Just follow along. You're going to be fine. All right. So I've placed this. If you didn't watch from the very beginning and you're just coming in, you missed the part where I told you that I pre-cut all of these. So you're going to have to go back and watch. But as I do this, this is going to make sense. Okay. So I've got this in place where I want it. I think I might move it a little bit. Okay. So I want to make sure this is kind of like that die cutting template where you drop the die down in. You're just really making sure that all of your white space is even around the outside. Okay. All right. Now, we've got this one in place. Now, we're going to take this one that we made, and we're going to lay it on top. See how we can see through? We can move it all around and see through until it's perfect. Now, where is perfect? What should it look like? Well, when you get your kit, this picture in here shows you what it looks like when it's perfect. So look for where the second color pink is. You can see, let me get my Tim Holtz tool here, my pointer, like it's a PowerPoint. You can see here how it's supposed to meet perfectly right over here, right? And that little dot should be over here. And this little part over here curves over here perfectly. And this matches over here. So that makes it easy. We have our little guide. And then we're going to make sure that our template fits. So as you can see, this dot right here, I'm going to zoom in. Hopefully it's not too close, but I'm going to zoom in. You can see now 
This dot is in the right spot. This little part's going over here. This is going under here. And this is wrapped around here, right? Just like the picture. All right. So now we have that in place. And we're going to put that there like that. Now we have the outside. So we can put this template in the perfect spot so that when we drop the piece in there, everything's going to be lined up perfectly. Now remember, this technique, you can have a much more loose layered flower. You don't have to be so spot on if you don't want to be. It's not the end of the world if you're not. But if you're one of those people that's a perfectionist and you want your flowers to be absolutely perfect, this is a great way to mass produce these flowers. See, you're going to drop one in here to do the first layer. Now you're going to drop the second one in here to do the second layer. Okay, we're all on the same page, right? Now this is still wet and messy. We don't need it to be wet and messy anymore. We know that it's all lined up. So we could take a paper towel and we can just dry up all of that purple. See, it's coming right off the vellum because it's a dye ink and it takes forever to dry. And I don't want to heat set it. It's kind of a pain. So there, I just kind of blotted up all the wetness. And now you can see how perfect that looks, right? Okay, so there's our second layer. Now we're going to go back. We're going to take this piece of vellum. We're going to lay it on top here. We're going to stamp it again with wild lilac. I'm just inking that up up there. Okay. We're just going to stamp the vellum. It doesn't matter if the vellum is perfectly centered or not. Okay. Now we're going to line this up on top of the other one. It's pretty easy to see. And the reason it's easy to see is because you can see that white outline so well. So we're going to line that one up. Now, if you feel better about it, you can tape that down. I think I will. I'll feel better about it. I'm just going to very lightly tack it down. Looks like it's pretty good there. Just going to lightly tack it down. I'm not even pressing real hard on that. And we're going to add our second layer, which is the tranquil teal, right onto the vellum, right on top. And so the recap, the purpose for doing all this and setting this up is so you can make a lot at one time. You can make a lot at one time, and they're going to be perfect every time. So now I'm putting the second layer on there. Now I'm taking this off, and this is going to be my final layer of flowers here. And once it's set up, I could leave this in my Misty for days if I want to keep mass producing these. See, now that one's perfect. Now I'm going to lay it on top of this one. So where does this go? Well, you can see here we want the red, that real dark red to be up there. We want it to go around here. We want it to come around here. So let's line it up so it looks like that. So you can see the brown right through there. So I'm starting down here because I can see how good that is. And then I'm just going to shift it a little bit. There we go. And it's almost like magic once you... I've got too many things on my fingers. It's almost like magic once you get it into the right spot. It just... You go like, oh, there it is. You can kind of see it all. So let's keep finagling. There we go. Okay. Looking good. Okay. So now I'm going to tape that down. And I'm going to take my final plum punch and layer that in place. And the reason why I put these on top is because this is where you're going to drop your die cut piece down in there to get that perfect placement each time. Okay, so now we've got the three layers. 
Make sure I've got even white around the outside. Looking pretty good. I'm not looking at your comments, so I hope you all haven't left. <laughs> okay, there we go. And over here. All right, so once again, I'm going to clean up all of that ink that's in there. That's messy. I don't need all of that wet ink. So I'm just going to tap all that ink out of there. That's the vellum. So this way it won't transfer onto my good flowers. Okay, so now I've got my three layers there. Now, you do want to remember to clean your stamps because you don't want these colors for your flowers. Now we're going to do colors that make sense. Okay. So the colors that I want to use tonight, obviously, we haven't played with them yet. It's the new colors. I want to use the light carnation, the medium carnation, and the dark carnation. Okay. <laughs> Great to see all of you. Thanks for joining. All right. Now I've got lots of these cuts, so we can do different color combinations. We can do all kinds of different things. All you have to do is drop that first one into the template. See that? And then I use something like the craft pick, but a lot of times because the stamps are sticky, it'll stick right to the stamp instead. So that's fine too. So we're going to start with the first color. Make sure our templates are all pressed down. I'm going to start by inking that up with light carnation. I am going to back out a little bit now. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to start by inking up the big stamp. That's the first stamp, the solid one with light carnation. And the nice thing about this is you can do a couple of layers if you want it to be darker. Okay. So we'll get the first layer on there. You can see that it's stuck to the top, so I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to lay it down there again, and I'm going to give it another layer. Oh no, you're having thunderstorms? I know some of you actually are having snowstorms. That's crazy talk. Okay, so here we've got our second layer. Okay, I'm going to pull that off. All right, so now we're going to pop it into the next one. We could do two at a time. If you want to do another one of these, you could pop this in and you could ink them up two at a time. We're going to use the light one on this one again. And then we're going to use the medium one on the second layer. Okay, so here we go. Stamping two at a time now. Got the light one over here. All right. We'll do a second layer there. Let's just stamp that now so it doesn't... These are kind of new stamps. Get that second layer. I'm doing the medium on this layer here. Aren't those colors pretty together? Okay. So there's our two layers. Layer one and layer two. And see how perfectly lined up they are? I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. Look at that. Look how perfect that is right there. And that is... Okay, I'm backing out again. All right, so now everybody goes to the right. This one goes over here. This one, if you can't get it out, you can use your Tim Holtz craft pick to give it a little help there. All right, and we could put another one in here if we wanted to, but because I'm, I just want to do two in this color combination, then I'll do some more color combinations and we can look at them. All right, so I'm going to close up the light carnation. All right, let's get, 
let's just do this medium carnation on this one. But if you want to take the time, you definitely can do two to three at a time this way. Okay. We'll give it one more layer. So the, the vellum is one use only? Well, the vellum is one use only because the vellum is what is where the stamp is on the lid. But you can, once you get the vellum spot done, yeah, the vellum, the vellum, I believe, is one use only. Okay. So there we go. Now, oop, I got some dirt because I didn't clean that stamp well. So let's see what happens. Maybe it'll cover up. You do have to clean your stamps well. That's a my problem. All right, I'm going to use the dark carnation here. I'm going to go over that. Hopefully, it'll cover a lot of it. I don't know that it will, though, because it is translucent ink. But it's not bad. Look at that. It's not bad. Okay. And again, can you see how... Let's just zoom in again. I want to show you what I was talking about. Can you see up here how that's perfect in there? It's perfect on the edge there. It's perfect right around here. I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> better than horrible. It's a lot better than horrible, right? <laughs> all right, so we'll do another layer of this and then we'll move the next one over. There we go. There's the first one. You can see how perfect that is. Now, all we have to do is move this one over one. And we're going to add that third layer, the dark carnation, on top. There's one layer. And we'll give it a second layer. Okay. Question. If, yes. <clears throat> if the stamps are already lined up using this technique, is the vellum needed anymore? Well, the vellum's under there, so you really can't take the vellum out or you have to remove everything. And then the vellum is needed because the vellum is what gives you this purple line out here and this purple line out here so that you can actually place this and get the even white space around there. So yes, the vellum is needed. Gotta leave the vellum in there. All right, so there's my two. Now I'm gonna clean these stamps and let's try a couple other fun combinations and see what we come up with. So one of my favorite combinations, and I've done this one before, I think it's a really pretty combination for um, autumn. Because I think this particular uh, stamp set can be used year round. It can be whatever kind of flower you want it to be. So let's pop another one in here. Let's start with sweet corn. Sweet corn is a fave of mine. So we'll get that all inked up with some sweet corn. All right. Give it another layer. Even if it doesn't come out, just press it down and make sure that it's in the template. You want to always make sure it's in the template. All right. Okay, so sweet corn. Love that color. Isn't that just a buttery golden yellow? I love it. All right, so now I'm going to move it to the next spot and I'm going to use peach bellini. I think peach bellini is a great color, although some of these pinks might look really good in there too. But let's go with peach because this is a favorite of mine. Yellow and pink definitely look great together, but it'll it'll turn it peach, right? Because these colors are very translucent and they show what's underneath. So peach is a cool one. That's so pretty together. You can do this. 
Jennifer, you can absolutely do this. And I know like in the beginning, if you're just tuning in, you're like, oh my God, what is she doing? But if you watch it and just do it with me, you know, do each step, pause the video, get yours set up the same way. And once it's set up, oh my gosh, it's so easy to just go, 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 go. All right, we'll get this one out of here. And now my last color that I'm going to use, and I, I know you guys know this one because you've seen me do it before, is Faded Brick. Love Faded Brick with this combination. Okay, so this is Faded Brick. Here we go. Oh, look how gorgeous that one is. Isn't that beautiful? I don't even need another stamping. The stamps are all seasoned now, so they're they're working really well. But look at that color combination. <gasps> oh, I love it. I could do the dark color to start with, Sue. Absolutely. There's no reason why I can't. That's the beauty of this. You could never do that without a template because you wouldn't know how to fit the other ones around it, right? Okay, so that's a great color combination. I'll show these again. I'm going to clean this, but yes, definitely. Definitely you could. You know what it is for me? I like the magic of that last layer going on there, and that's when like all the detail really pops. So I think I, I like seeing it at the end just come to life. So maybe that's why I do it in that order. So we've got, we've got two really nice color combinations there. All right, of course, you know what we have to do. We have to do the teals because what's Gina K without her teal, right? So uh, sea glass first or ocean mist. Let's do sea glass first. Now you could do this as an even even bolder combination if you use turquoise C. Should we do that? Should we do the real bold combination? Let's do the real bold combination. I'm gonna start with turquoise C. It's just darker than sea glass. Okay. Give it another whirl. Okay. Don't be mad at yourself. Never be mad at yourself. You're doing the best that you can every day. That's all you can ever do. Okay, so the second color I'm going to use is Blue Lagoon always a fun color against turquoise C. So this is turquoise C. Now I'm going to use blue lagoon. And I know that the lids of these look kind of similar, but blue lagoon is really vibrant and you can really see it on, on turquoise C. I love that color combination. Okay. Isn't that a great color on there? Let's do another layer of that. Where'd I put it? Here it is. <laughs> I have so many colors out right now. They're everywhere. Okay. It's definitely a good idea to put your lid back on your color. Okay, so there's Turquoise and Blue Lagoon. Now I'm going to move it over one more and I'm going to add Tranquil Teal, which is our darkest teal. I'm going to clean that real quick. All right, Tranquil Teal. Here she is. Okay. Yeah, layering stamps and stencils. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're not like one of those people that loves hours of coloring, these colors, doing it this way is really fun and it really gives it all that depth and dimension. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. And again, they're perfect. All right, now we're gonna do Sue's way next because Sue said, let's go from the dark to the light. And I think that's a great idea. 
Okay, so those three. My hands are so inky already. All right, we'll do one more. And then we'll do, um, we'll do the leaves. We'll get those leaves set up. And then we'll throw together a couple of quick cards. We'll, I know we'll get two out of this. Okay. All right, one more, one more, one more. We're going to start with the darkest, just to show you that it, that it works. Okay, so let's do, let's do tomato soup, sweet mango, and sweet corn. What do you think of that combination? Or should we do, let's see. Oh, you know what? Hmm. I'm missing a couple ink cubes in my collection here. Let's try this and see how this looks. So we'll do we'll do the darkest one first, which is the tomato soup. So we're going backwards this time. Tomato soup. There we go. We're going to move it over to the next spot and we'll do sweet mango. stamp. Okay. Sweet mango. But you can see how fun this is just kind of figuring out which colors you want to do. Oh, this is nice and vibrant. I feel like wild dandelion would be pretty on this too. It'd be very vibrant. cool like that too. Not going to lie. You know, it's kind of cool to have that more graphic look and just leave it like that with a lot of white. I'm glad you suggested this, Sue. All right. And now we'll go over one more. Now we could do wild dandelion, but I think sweet corn is going to really bring it in nicely. I'll just soften everything a bit. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. It's another very pretty combination. And, you know, if you want to see the difference between the peaches and the yellows, how different, you know, just having the orange and the tomato soup versus the peach bellini and faded brick. This is so much more subtle. It's more subdued. This is more summery. This is more autumny. Yeah, I think so too, Karen. I think the sweet corn was a good, good pick. All right, so we've got a couple flowers there. So now let's do our leaves. We'll create this leaf template. And then if you're just tuning in, you can see how I did it. All right. And we're going to use our new spruces because these greens are greens that I've wanted in my collection forever. I'm going to remove the flower stamps just to get them out of the way. These three. I'm going to put them in my little magnetic tray, even though they're, they're not magnetic. I don't want to lose them. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to line this up where we want it. Make sure that the flowers are aligned. I mean, the leaves are aligned. Okay, I'm going to need a few more pieces of washi here. Okay, we'll get this one down where we want it. Okay. Then we're going to lay a piece of that vellum on top piece right here and we're going to stamp it again in the wild lilac and the wild lilac is going to be our template so that's why we're using these bright colors because we really want to be able to see how things line up underneath okay all righty now let me clean that because i don't want wild lilac leaves So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this little template, this little piece of vellum, and we're going to line it up where we want it. Now we could do 
couple different things, but I like to line them up so that they're right on the insides. You see that, how that looks? Like that, okay? Now I need to get, I should have washi tape ready to go here. I don't need a piece that big, I don't think. Okay, so we're gonna lay it down again. We're gonna shift it around till it looks perfect. Okay, the leaves are super easy to line up this way. And we're going to tack down the vellum. And now we're gonna get our second template and we're going to line that up the same exact way as we lined the first one up. With the same amount of white space, like the white space in the same spots, just even all around. Okay. Now, when I put the template down, I do like to have a little bit more washi tape than I use there because I don't want the template to shift. So there we go. Now, I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel and clean up that vellum. Cause again, that vellum is really wet and messy and we really don't need it to be wet. We needed it to be crisp. Now we can kind of dull it out a little bit. I'm just cleaning off all the purple off of that. Okay. And now we're gonna do our last one. So we're gonna stamp it first with wild lilac. It doesn't matter if it's crooked. Then I'm going to lay this right on top there and see how I'm making sure that it's even so I can see the even white space around the outside. Okay. And then I'm going to lightly tack this down with some washi. Just lightly. I'm not pressing real hard. And then I'm going to stamp the next one with tranquil teal because that's my second color that I was using. There we go. Okay, looking good. It's in the right spot where we wanted it. Now, honestly, if you're like really into the layered flowers, leave your template set up overnight. Come back in the morning and do 50 more. Then you've got all these flowers and leaves. You're making your own ephemera, so you can make those fast cards. Okay, so now taking this little vellum template, I'm laying it over here, and I'm attaching it to the branch in the right spots, like that. And then I get my final template that I made out of cardstock and line it up. Get my washi. <laughs> you're not sure about the vellum? What do you mean you're not sure about the vellum? The vellum, you need the vellum under there because that's how you see the white line. If you don't have everything stamped on the vellum, you don't know where to put this template. The vellum is what's showing you how to get that white line perfect around the outside. So you have to do the vellum. And now I'm just gonna clean all this off because I don't care. You can even smear it, it doesn't even matter. Okay, because your templates are set up. All right, let's make a couple sets of leaves now. I'm gonna start this one with our lightest spruce. By the way, I saw somebody using the medium spruce and the dark spruce with Christmas pine, and it's beautiful together. So don't forget to try to mix these colors with your other colors too. All right, so we've got our light spruce there. Let's do another layer of that. I love it. It's such a gray green. So pretty. All of our greens have a lot of yellow in them, so it's really nice to have one that's more bluish, more grayish. Okay. And just pop that over here for a second. I'm going to do another one.
Now I'll show you the other green combination that I really love. I'm gonna do two of these. I may have gotten a little goober on there, we'll see. Little goober. Let me clean that off. That was just on my stamp. I'm not worried about that one. go. Okay. So now we're going to do layer two. Layer two is going to be the medium spruce. Christmas pine cardstock has been discontinued for quite a while. I'm so sorry. Yeah, our mill doesn't make it anymore. There's a serious cardstock shortage right now. Even just getting regular cardstock is crazy. Look how perfect. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> do another layer. Okay. But Christmas pine looks great with white too. So you can always make your own little shadow layer of Christmas pine just by rubbing the ink pad around the perimeter of a piece of white cardstock. Okay, last one. I'm just going to do one more little layer here. There we go. Okay. And then we'll do our final layer, which is going to be our dark spruce. So we'll pop that into this last template and we'll go with the dark spruce. There we go. Get all those stems in there. Perfect. Isn't that fun? Okay, one more, and then I'll show you one more combination. I know it's getting late, but we didn't get to see you guys much last week, so, you know, we can go a few minutes over. Okay, so there's that one. Now let's do another green combination. This is another green that I just love. Okay. So... Let's start with a little jelly bean green. Jelly bean. That's this one right here. Totally different look with the jelly bean and, and the yellow greens, but still really beautiful. Okay, getting really good coverage now. Let's pop that out. Get it into the next one. Now, for this color, we're going to use grass green. Grass green is still a yellow green, but it's a little bit deeper. We might do two layers of that, but you can see how it just... It's in the same vein, but it's darker. See that? And then my final one is gonna be fresh asparagus. So those would be three really nice layering greens, similar to the light, medium, and dark spruce. They all go together really well. This is fresh asparagus. Now you can always use browns too in place of the uh, the green stem. You could always go brown. But aren't they pretty and so different, right? Just completely different looks. All right. So we're going to make very, very quick cards here because we only have six minutes left. But I'm not worried. I think we can do it. Okay. Now here's another little trick. If you really like this setup, well, this you really need a second Misty if you want to keep it in there forever. 
But just for now, I'm going to move this out of here because I don't want to clean the whole thing up. <laughs> and I'm going to grab a different misty mat. I have several misties because I'm a little misty obsessed. I'm just going to put a different mat in there. That's the original mat that came with the misty. I, I use the mouse pad. But see, you can't take the stamps off. That's the problem. Don't think that you can, oh, I'll just keep them on the mat and then I'll change out the stamps. You really can't unless you can really put those stamps back in the same exact spot. And I don't, I don't think I could do it. Maybe you could do it. I don't think I could do it. Okay, so I've got a couple ovals cut out over here. So I think what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of tape. And I'm going to put a little tape here on the back of this double stitched oval. And then I'm going to use the greeting set from the kit, the So Many Sentiments. And I'm going to do So Thankful for a Friend Like You. So Thankful for a Friend Like You. There we go. So this is our double stitched ovals and it's the middle side, the middle size. They come in single and double stitched. I store them together, but they're two separate sets and I'm using the middle oval. So I'm gonna use the middle double and the middle single. All right, so I think that's pretty straight. I think it's gonna to have to be straight enough. Here's hoping for the best. Okay, so I'm going to get my black ink pad. And I'm going to ink this up with some black onyx dye ink. Hi, Kathy Z. Okay. There we go. Let's give it one more layer. Okay. There we go. So there is my first oval. I'm gonna do two cards. They're gonna be very similar. So I probably could have made a little template for that as well, but you know, I didn't think of that. So I'm gonna do one more oval. We'll do two different color combinations here of this card. Get a second one here. So be, we're going to give away these two cards, Tom, okay? Mm -hmm. Tom, do you have a word of the day <laughs> while I'm finishing this up? <laughs> a word of the day. A Indeed, word? I do. You do? Tom's okay. word so of the day. The word of the day is innuendo. Innuendo, you know that word that means like subtle communication. Kind yeah, of. like yeah, like making an innuendo. Yeah, I know what that means. I think most people know what that means, right? Innuendo. Yes, innuendo. And um, so, <laughs> so it's also used in Italy as the. Italian brand for Preparation H. <laughs> Innuendo. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's thanks to your uh, parents' comedy act. That's my dad, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to layer these two together. Innuendo. Okay, and then I'm going to lay these two together. That's very funny, Tom. I like that. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to use a little bit. I, I pre-cut some of these because I thought that these would be really pretty to use, these little um, pattern papers from the new kit. So let me show you what I'm going to do. All right. What time is it? Oh, maybe I better not. I'll do it a little. I'll do it the easy way and we'll do it the harder way next time because we are running out of time. 
All right, so I'm gonna cut this down to three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. You could also use master layouts too for this. That's what I was going to do originally, but we are running a little short on time. Die cutting as always takes a little bit more time. And then we're going to cut two black panels. First, I'm gonna cut this sheet in half at the five and a half inch mark. And then we're gonna cut these down to be layering panels. So we were at three and a half, we're gonna go up to three and five eighths of an inch by four and seven eighths of an inch. And we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm making two cards at once here. That's why there's a lot of cutting going on. Okay. Now these panels are two inches and I'm gonna keep them at two inches. I'm gonna cut them down to four and three quarters of an inch. Both of them. Four and three quarters of an inch. And I did already pre-cut four and three quarters of an inch by two and an eighth. This way they match top to bottom, but they've got that little layer on the side like that. Okay. Alrighty. Now, the only thing I'm gonna need are card bases, but let's see what we can do. So this is just one of my go-to layouts whenever I need a quick card. I love having this kind of thick border piece of patterned paper. You can also do it by stenciling a design or creating your own pattern paper with stamps. And then these two pieces will go together. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad you guys are hanging in there with me. I'm glad you don't mind when I go a little bit over. Okay. Now we can either lay this on the side like this and then we can have this one right here, which I think I like that look. But I also like this look where it's right in the center. And then this oval is here. But I think we get to see a little bit more of the pattern paper when we do the side one. So let's do that today. So I'll just go over onto the side. I'll leave a little border of white there. And then we'll pop this right in the middle of the card. Right here, like this. I'm gonna go up just a tiny bit, should I? Just a little. Okay. I'm kind of making it even to the edges here. All right, we'll do the same thing, but we're gonna use this tile looking pattern paper. All right, there we go. And then we'll layer these two together. Now again, <laughs> again, if you wanted to cut this all out with master layouts too, you'd get that little decorative stitch and that could jazz it up a little bit more because it is a simple card. But sometimes simple's okay. And we'll do the same thing over here, but with this pattern. Tom, you put Linda's friend to sleep with your guitar playing. They were FaceTiming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Got a good little bit showing over there. I like that look. And then we'll do this oval here. Now we've got to pick card base colors. So we definitely have to use one of these here. Gotta do this. Do that. And then I cut these out. I really like these. This is from our um, foliage 
set of die cuts. I think a little black in there really makes it. Don't you think that's nice? This is our foliage fillers. So it's not these two, but it's these dies right here. And I use this one right there. I just store everything together. Okay, so I think that's gonna be pretty. And then I think Innocent Pink would be a nice, mm, that might look kind of nice. You could do Innocent Pink with that one. So I'll cut an Innocent Pink card base for that. And then for this other one, I really wanna use this one with the faded brick. I think that's so pretty. And I'll use this with the fresh asparagus and jelly bean. And then we'll also use one of these little guys. I think they're both so pretty. Like that. And then I think maybe a little peach bellini behind there. A little peach bellini would be very pretty with that. That'll really bring that out. All right, so let me cut these two card bases real quick. <laughs> Innocent pink really works well with the kit. It's just a good color for the kit. And Peach Bellini with that. I like that color combination. I think it's pretty for spring. You know what else is a really nice color is this one. This is barely there. And that would be a really nice one too, but it might be just maybe a little drab, although not too bad, not too bad. So that's another option if you have barely there. Not barely, is that barely there? No, it's warm glow, sorry, warm glow. <laughs> I don't even know my colors. Barely there is even lighter. Okay, and this is innocent pink. And all I need is my scoring board, and we will layer this up together, and we have two cards. So I hope that that template idea helps you guys. I hope that you, uh, you give that a try, because if you're like me, sometimes, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter. You like it more kind of loose. The, the layering is okay if it's loose. But other times you just kind of want it to be spot on. And once you set up that template, it is set up and you can really, really mass produce. Okay. So we'll get this on here first. This one. I like these grays. These gray pattern papers are nice. Now, if you don't have pattern paper, you can also just use some Stormy Sky or Soft Stone ink, and you can ink blend over a stencil to create a nice little panel for that. So, but grays are always really nice neutrals to use on your cards, and they seem to go with cool tones and warm tones, don't you think? Because this might be a little cooler, but this is definitely a warmer. Ooh, I'm warm tonight. All right, let's get a little glue on this guy. Get my little glue bottle here. And put some glue on this. I really need to get in the scene here. Innuendo, huh, Tom? <laughs> yeah, those uh, word of the days, words of the day, not word, word of the days. All right, we'll do this one first. Get this down. hanging over a little bit like that. And then we can kind of pop that in there. That's pretty. I like that. 
will pop it up. Of course, I'll be using some foam squares. Get a couple of those on there. Simple, simple layout. Okay, and the same thing over here. Just a quick little pop of glue back here. These are the fine tip bottles that I'm using. They really do, they don't clog. If glue isn't coming out, it's just because there's a little tiny bit of dried glue on the top that you can just pick right off. That's the only thing. They do not, they're, I don't know if it's like a Teflon center or something, but man, they're really nice. I want that. I like the black. I didn't know if I would like that or not, but I think I like that little black accent because you know me, I always have to have black on my cards. And I think I just like having the little black twig. It makes everything pop a little more. So the cards didn't take very long to make. And all that really took a while was setting up the template. But I've got a bunch here bunch more little pieces here that I can use for other cards. And if I had set that up, I could have made a hundred little pieces. Okay, so there we go. There's our two cards, our Peach Bellini card and our card with the brand new ink colors. All right, guys. All right, Tom. We're ready to uh, to pick some winners. <laughs> All righty. Oh yeah, the time. twigs are twigs would be great with a Christmas wreath. I saw that comment go by. That's that's good. All right, so let's give away the um, the carnation card first. The is that what that's called? The light carnation, dark carnation. So it's the carnation color, pink. Here the pink we card. go. Cheesy <laughs> drum roll, please. Amy Colling. Amy Colling hey, is the winner. Amy. Congratulations, Amy. Yeah. All right. Okay, Amy, you won the pink card. <laughs> now who's going to get the peach card? Peach card. The peach Bellini card goes to Robin Frazee Parsons. Robin. Robin. Congratulations, Robin. All right, Amy and Robin, just send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com and say whether you won the pink card or the peach card, and I will get those out to you. Well, everybody, this has been so much fun. I know we went about 15 minutes over tonight, but um, hey, we owed it to you since we were only live once last week. I hope you enjoyed this technique, and I hope you'll give it a try. We'll be back on Thursday at noon for another Crafternoon session. We hope you'll join us. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much, and well, we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.